YouTube, what up though? Jermaine the Credit Fiend. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys for taking the time to check out this video. If you're returning, welcome back. If you if this is your first time, hopefully you guys like the content. And uh, hey, if you get that thumbs up, and if you are not subscribed, right? Now, don't forget to hit that little that little tab, people. It's not heavy. I promise you, it won't weigh your hand down. It won't hurt your hand. And don't forget, if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification, right? I got some stuff I'm working on or whatever, some drops, some new content, right? And try to help out as many people. As I, you know, as, as I can, because that's what it's about. Iron sharpens iron. One team, one fight. Okay. So, just information right here I want to share about late payments and stuff. And this is after reviewing a credit report from a, a subscriber or whatever. And, um, you know, I just asked, hey, man, you mind if I share this right here? You know, so this is off the dome, people. I ain't really rehearsed for this stuff. And I don't rehearse for any videos because when it comes to credit, credit fiend, I'm going to talk it off the dome. So, I'm going to talk about. This right here, and I'm just providing information. People are not promising or guarantee any type of results or anything like that. I'm not offering any kind of professional, financial, or legal advice. If you need that, then seek that. Okay, all right. From a professional, <laughs> you want my opinion? Hey, come my way. Okay, so if you can see right here, this is uh, you know, this is account I'm talking about right here. We're talking about these late payments right here, and and uh, whatever he disputed was actually verified as accurate. But I'm gonna say this: I got a whole video on how to weaponize verified as accurate. So check that out. So we're going to things that I want to show that it's overlooked, right? When So the key to disputing whatever is to understand, you know, what rights looks like on a credit report. That's it. What, you know, because we go for the typical, the date, the balance, you know, and, you know, stuff like, oh, it's a late payment. I'm trying to dispute it. I'm like, do you have any support? Were you actually late? Well, yeah, I'm still going to dispute it. They got to remove it. No, they don't have to remove anything. Okay, that's misinformation, people. So check this out, 30, 60, 90, 120, all right? You see, after that, it's all 120s. Now, <clears throat> that's not that's not what I'm talking about because for TransUnion, all right, for those who don't know, like every report looks different. That's why I don't do tri-merge reports such as Smart Credit, Identity IQ, and all those got these accounts, um, what you call it, uh, those ones you get from the mortgage, um, I forget the name of that report. But anyway, but they try merge. Everything's all <clears throat> lined up next to each other as far as the information. Well, just let you know, people, if you got a report like that, you don't have to um, dispute directly with the bureaus. You can dispute that through smart credit. You can dispute that through Identity IQ because that is a reseller report. That's what the information report and inaccurate on. So that's what you should dispute it on. OK, you don't have to go directly to the. The, the actual consumer report in ADC. Okay. So, but the report looks different, meaning, well, TransUnion only do 120 and it's, then it's 120 plus. Okay. The rest of them, you'll see all the way up to 180 days, but TransUnion, they won't, they don't. So just, so that's not out of the ordinary because I asked them this question right here. Okay. After this right here, when you see the account went 120 and it remained at 120, we don't know if they mean 150, 180, and so on. Did you make any payments here? Because they said the last payment that they received was for 2019, which is when the, the account closed, and that's after the last uh, late payment that was reported. And he said, no, I didn't make any payments. The only time I made a payment was, you know, I paid the balance, and that's this right here is accurate. Okay, cool. So that means this right here is inaccurate then. And why is that? Because I want to show you, remember, I don't do theories, people. So if you're new to my channel, please don't come at me with a with a theory. All right. I'm going to go with what's in black and white and not just necessarily, you know, something you've been chopped up and screwed up and come up with your own interpret, you know, interpretation of it or whatever. All right. Black and white, clear, clear and conspicuous. <laughs> so check this out. We're going to count the days in. If you didn't make any payments, we're going to count the days. 90, 120, 150, 180, 210. Um, 240, 270 days late. <clears throat> I said, this is what I would go for in this case, because this is not only inaccurate, it's seriously unfair because this right here, the, I mean, I'm going to show you guys how this right here is can damage, right? Seriously damage your score. Okay. Cause remember payment history is the biggest part of your score. 35% of your score. What, what is this payment history? Again, Every report looks different. You notice right here, TransUnion don't call this payment history. What do they call it? Ratings. So that's what you have to dispute, the ratings. Okay? That's the first thing. But let me go with what's in black and white. I'm sure you guys what I'm talking about. I'm going to switch screens, so bear with me. Okay? So when do charge-off happen? This is from Equifax. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Well, it depends on the repayment terms and the type of account. That's right, the type of account too. But the time frame is generally between 120 and 180 days after you become delinquent. Creditors will likely first send letters or call to remind you of the past due amount before the account is transferred to a collection agency or sold to a debt buyer. Now, even stuff, even this information right here is being overlooked. This little part right here, right? Again, you got to know what right looks like because there's a difference between... They're all collection agency, but there's a, I mean, a debt collectors, but one is just a typical collection agency that was, the account was transferred to, meaning assigned to, and the other one is from a debt buyer. Whoa, well, that's the difference between a debt buyer and, you know, a typical collection agency. And I got a whole video on that, so check my videos, look for that, right? Watch some other ones too. So let's get back to here. Between 120 and 180 days, notice <clears throat> it does not exceed 180 days. And how many, how many days did we say? What, 270 days? They went way beyond the 180 days. But it, that's just this is just Equifax saying it, right? We want to go with what's in what's in uh black and white. So I'm gonna go to the Fair Credit Reporting Act here, right? And we're gonna go to section 605. Um I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna, 605. Y'all bear with me. All right, sip on some coffee or something. Classes in session. Oh, and by the way, I I don't, you know, for the question that people ask me, hey, do you offer any kind of training? I'm trying to. If I can get enough small groups at a time and people, it won't be free, but I'll go over things, categories, topics, like we're going to discuss collections. Then we'll discuss charge off. We'll discuss repossessions just in sections like that. All right. I'm, I'm willing to do that if I get enough people. All right. And, you know, I got to set the price or whatever, because, you know, I'm not, <laughs> not doing all that for free. But if you're interested, you know, send, shoot me an email or whatever, and um, and let's talk some uh, let's talk about it. So let me go to section six hundred five here. Y'all bear with me. It's it's a lot of information, huh? So section six hundred five, <clears throat> um, requirements relating to information contained in consumer reports. Okay, and this is fifteen U.S.C. sixteen eighty one C. So we're gonna go scroll down from six hundred five A. You gonna go past A. B, then we're going to go right here to C, right? Running of reporting period, okay? That go that seven year, the seven year period referred to. So everybody's saying seven years, you know, you got to got to go to the source, got to read it. Referred to in paragraphs four and six <clears throat> of subsection A shall begin. Seven years, when do it begin? With respect to any delinquent account that is placed for a collection, check this out, internally or by referral to a third party, Whichever is earlier. Now, technically, there's only one. Oh, this is another video. Who's for the report of collection? Mm -hmm. Charge to profit and loss, right? Uh, or subject to any similar action, right? Upon the expiration of the what? 180 day period. When? Beginning when? On the date of the commencement of the delinquency, which immediately preceded, meaning before the charge off or the collection activity charge the profit and loss or similar action so that's that 30 days that led up to it so it's seven years from that day that 30 days that you didn't bring the account current is what it's saying so and like in this case let's go back to this remember we seen right here 180 day the expiration in black and white i don't do theories people 180 day period okay so let's jump back to this um credit report for training purpose right let's go back here it said 180 days so okay 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, right there, 180. After 180, it should have did what? Charge off, close. And this would help this individual because see right here, look what they did the next month. They reported another 120 days late, another, then another one after that, and then another one after that, causing damage, bringing their on-time payment history percentage because their account didn't close until April of 2019. So after that, these, these late payments right here, all these late payments, was dragging that on-time payment history percentage for open accounts, it was dragging it down like an anchor and it caused damage, right? So in this case, it would have benefited him, this individual, more if they were to say, okay, that's 180 days late, charge off, right? And then remember, people, it's charge off, then close, not close, then charge off because charge off is considered a major delinquency and the account can't close and then have, acti act have activity like reporting a late payment. It's going to go to charge off, and then close. And after that, it's no no activity, right? No data, nothing reported. So in this right here, you should see, even like I told him, well, 
you should have seen 04 um 2019 should have had you know close or no or nr transunion do nr for not reported something like that you should have seen that but you don't so incomplete but payment history i'm like this is what i would go for now who's responsible well in this case right now it's transunion right transunion is liable right because they're reporting inaccurate information i said so if you dispute it the ratings remember it's called the ratings and they come back verified as accurate again and you you notice that this right here um didn't you know this part right here didn't change that's the first thing you check when you get see it verified as accurate is go to the information that you disputed in this case late payments right the the ratings is reporting um inaccurate information okay account did not close after 180 day you know late or whatever that would be my something like that you know i mean i just do it off the dome something like that and i said you can do a double tap this is what i told him you can send one to transunion but you also need to hit that furniture of information right of the same information right here disputed directly with that furniture of information but being that it's a creditor right not a debt collector you can call and say i want the payment I need the payment records between 07, um, 2018 to um, 04, 2019, right? And they may say they had to mail it to you or maybe they'll email it to you. Who knows? But you that's just all gathering information. You're going behind enemy lines. You're gathering, you're, you're doing a, um, what you call it? A, you're probing, right? And you're probing and you see what they got, okay? Before you, maybe before you even dispute. But me personally, I would just, I'm, I'm doing, I would do a double tap. This is inaccurate. This is 200 something days late. Think about that. So I want to, you know, I, I figured that this right here was some good information to share because I'm like, I know you're not the only one um, who's going through this because I've, I've encountered this plenty of times, even when in my five years in the credit repair industry, I've encountered this right here. And I'm like, well, at first I didn't catch it because again, I didn't know what right looks right, right? Or poorly trained. Okay. That's, that's not a re that's not an excuse though. Because it was up to me to get to know it. Because my, my you know, the sole purpose of my business is to help my clients, right? I mean, it's people before profit. Okay, I didn't put profit before people. I put people before profit. Zig Ziglar, if you help enough people get what they want, in return, you'll get what you want, right? And I want to impact people. I, I'll tell people, hey, my business is small. It's just me. I don't have a team. But the impact isn't. That's what I was going for, right? I, I never spent money on marketing and advertising and, you know, we call it, you know, paying for leads and stuff like that. I just wanted my work, right, to to do it for, you know, do it for me. No promise or guarantee any type of results. And every client of mine would know that. I'm not promised or guarantee anything. The only thing I promise is to do my absolute best to use the laws if, you know, the applicable laws for your situation or whatever. Now, if the consumer reporting ADC, the, the creditor or the debt collector or whoever failed to comply then it's on you the individual you know what i mean like okay what you want to do just your, i'm doing this stuff on your behalf meaning if you knew if you had the knowledge that i have or the time that i have right to do this you would you would be doing this so what would you do if this was this is you i'm representing you so i'm writing this letter on your behalf it came back verified as accurate it's still inaccurate what you gonna do just take me out of the picture now it's just you what are you gonna do you're gonna continue to, you're gonna continue to let them do this to you you know that's it. You know, 2024 is coming up, people. You, you, New Year resolution. Enough is enough, right? That's what I say. Enough is enough. We got to do something. If anybody violate, right? If they violate people, then they compensate. That's my that's my mess. That's it. Don't forget to show me some love, though, people, man. Check out some of my other videos. <clears throat> like I said, I'm working on some new content or whatever. <clears throat> to try to help some people. You got some ideas. If you got a situation going on um, that you say, hey, this might be, you know, you know, do a video on this or that or whatever, you'll hit me up on the email or whatever. You can drop it in the comment section too. If you got something to add to help someone out in this video right here, then add that, right? Remember, we don't do the attack and all that child, you know, playground stuff, okay? We adults here, right? And so we can keep it, you know, uh, you know, like adults, okay? I'm not attacking anyone on anything like that. If you don't agree with the content, hey, just move on to another video or whatever, you know what I mean? I'm not proclaiming to know it all. I'm not proclaiming to to be the best, but I know I'm going to do my best and I, I owe that to my clients. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Be safe out there. Peace.